Have you ever looked at a strand of beautiful, irregular, kind of funky chip beads and said, wow, yeah, they're gorgeous, but what can I do with them? If you're looking for ideas for designs for using chip beads in your jewelry, you're in luck because today I have for you at least seven different ways that you can use chips in your jewelry designs. Hi there, Sandy here. So chip beads are one of those things that people love to look at but then don't know what to do with. And actually this video was by viewer request. I had a, re uh, a viewer on YouTube ask me to show different ways of using chip beads in your jewelry. There were lots of different chips. Often we see the semi-precious gemstones. These are actually dyed shells. And this, this earring design is one of those that's so versatile because you can use any type of bead. It doesn't even have to be a chip. But the thing with chips is that they are irregular. You can't depend on them to be a particular size or thickness. And if you have a design that requires consistent spacing between them, they're not going to work. So we need to find designs that play up the difference in the spacing. I love this one. This is just fun and interesting. So what I have here are a bunch of little one inch silver plated head pins. For this design you'll need three head pins and then the rest actually are eye pins. But what I did was just use these and made eye pins out of them with my one step looper. You just put the head end in and then you can just do this. Give it a bend and now you have an eye pin. I have some chips here and I also have a few spacers. I didn't use spacers on every single one. There's so many variations you could do. If you had little tiny balls like maybe two millimeter silver ball beads, those would be cute, like one on top of each chip. You could also have a daisy spacer, which is what these are, on the top and the bottom of each. You could stack the chips, which would look wonderful especially if you graduated the, um, it would look really cool if like you graduated the sizes so you went from big to by some of these the holes are not happy come on there we go so you went from big to small to smaller or even out again let's see maybe small and then medium, really honking big, <laughs> and then back in again. That's kind of a fun look. It's kind of graduated from small to big to small again. I'll talk more about that in a moment. I have ideas for that too. But let's get on to these earrings. So what you're going to ma end up making are 13 units. Five for the middle and then two sets of four for the sides. Of course, do as many variations on this as you want. I'm going to start by putting a daisy spacer in one of my chips and make a loop. You could absolutely add more spacers on here, as many as you want. So for a project like this, the one step looper is fantastic because you've got lots of loops to make. Uh, another variation you could do here is instead of making simple loops, which is what this is, it's just a simple loop, you could make wrapped loops. However, for two earrings, this would be nearly four dozen wrapped loops, and it just kind of, I said, no, I don't want to. Don't make me. <laughs> I wasn't in the mood for doing quite that many wrapped loops. So you're going to make three of these units for the bottoms that are still head pins with just a loop. That's a head pin on one end, a spacer, and a bead. And after making the first loops, I'm going to take the time with my chain nose pliers to make sure that all of those loops are closed. 
I have my three dangles for the bottoms and I made sure all the loops were closed and then I just went ahead and made the rest of them into eye pins and you'll need ten of these. I would strongly recommend after you make them that you take a minute with your pliers and make sure all the loops are closed so that you'll know all the loops on one side are tightly closed with nice loops. This just helps as you're putting it together. So what I'm going to do is just string on all of my eye pin units. You can make more or less as suits. Okay, so here are these 10 units. I like doing it this way and then notice I even face them all so that I can pick them up without setting down my tool and just whip through making all of these loops. Now these loops I'm not going to worry about making perfect at this point and I'll show you why. Because these are the ones that we're going to hook into the ones that we know are already closed nice and snug. So that's why it's good to do it that way. By the way, if you're a regular and you watch my videos every week, you might consider supporting me on Patreon. It really makes a huge difference and it is a factor in whether or not this channel stays on YouTube or not. If I didn't have patrons, I don't know that it would be worth it for me to continue making YouTube videos. And so I want to say a huge thank you to those who are already supporting me on Patreon. And don't forget that patrons have the opportunity to get up to two bonus tutorials every month. Now I have this in my hand. You can see this loop often with the looper, depending on the size of the loop, the size of the wire, it doesn't close all the way. And that's all right. I'm going to pick up one of my bottom dangle pieces. And because that loop is open, I can just pop it in there. And now I can grab my pliers. I love these bent chain nose pliers because I can really get into that kind of tight spot maybe huh. and close it up there now once that's closed I know that's in good shape I can move on to this one pick up one I can see that one is open and one is closed so the open one gets hooked onto here and you just pop it on and end up making one strand that is five units long and two that are four units long. Here are my three little strands all done. Now before I go on to assemble this earring, let me just show you a couple other ideas for using chips in your jewelry. So this earring is idea number one. And then just think about doing this exact same thing with any kinds of spacers, simple loops, or wrapped loops. But all you need to do is have them all on loops, and no head pins, just all eyes on both ends. And now you can make a bracelet, you can make a necklace with just the chips and because of the way they're all linked together on their own individual link it doesn't matter if you have crazy sizes and shapes. The only thing I would say is that if it's a bracelet make sure that they're comfortable because sometimes chips can be a little annoying. Here's another idea. Remember my little stack over here? You could do the exact same thing. In fact you could make a stack and have it in the middle as a focal for a necklace. You could have each of these be stacks instead of a single one or alternate or whatever pattern you want. So there's idea number two, stacking them instead of having them individually, especially if they're like these shell ones and they're sort of flat. You could also just, if you're not into the big long dangly earrings like I am, look at that earring, done, boom, <laughs> that's it just a stack of chips on an ear wire and you have a nice simple and yet kind of interesting funky ear. So that, that's idea number three. 
make long links for bracelets and necklaces, make stacks for earrings, bracelets, or necklaces, or do this. For this, if you happen to have a soldered jump ring, then that's awesome. That's actually perfect for this. If you don't, you don't have to. Of course, you can just make sure that your loops are very tightly closed and that your jump ring loop is very tightly closed. So I'm just going to put on here my three little strands of chips. One thing that's nice, if you have the patience for making a whole bunch of wrapped loops, is that the wraps are a, a point of interest in themselves. So you could actually almost skip spacer beads if you want to and just have the, the wraps because they lend their own beauty to the design. Now this is cool because I have three here. I don't have to worry about putting these on in the right order. You'll see why in a moment. If you have more than three, if you're doing like five and graduated sizes, then you'll have to be sure to put them on in the right order. But for three, it actually works out. So I just find my the right spot. So I'm going to have the, t the two fours on the side and the five on the, in the middle. And there we are. So it's right here that I want to put my ear wire. And there you have it. You get the idea. You have a really great pair of earrings playing up the strengths of chip beads. This is sort of a variation on that idea where you can just take, you could take head pins. These happen to be pieces of bead stringing wire, but I think you get the idea that if you just dangled head pins, with chips, you know, pretty ones, of course, and I love the little ball head pins for just a bit of decoration. But you could just add a loop to the, well, add a chip or two to a long head pin, make a loop in it, and dangle it from a loop for your ear wire, and there you go. Make them different lengths like these if you want, and there is another way of using chips in your designs. That's idea number four. And this could also be a pendant for a necklace. These are a little bit big for you as earrings. Idea number five is to use them in wire crochet. I did a video a while back, I'll link to it on my YouTube channel, where I used a cool little knitting tool to knit fine gauge wire and I put a whole assortment of beads on here. I don't know if any of these are actually chips, but this would be a perfect technique for knitting with chips. And you could make a bracelet, you could make a necklace, just depending on the length you want. Because there's so much space in between these and because the spacing is not a critical issue, it would be a perfect place to use chips. This is idea number five. Idea number six is to simply string them in clusters on memory wire. And if you alternate them with other beads, the way this design is, there's just some black, I think with these four millimeter drucks, alternated with the descending grouping of beads. And then those are alternating with a cluster of, of chips. And this is just a great pattern. And what's nice about having this on a bracelet is there isn't so much of these regular kind of pointy chip beads that it will become uncomfortable to wear. You could also do the exact same thing stringing chips onto necklace wire. And I just stretched this out a little. Actually, I have to restring this. I've had this for years. This is one of the first jewelry stringing projects I ever did, and I still love it. You can buy necklace memory wire and you can see that that is a beautiful choker design just with a few chips. This would be a great place to put like a really funky kind of irregular something for a focal if you have a, a bead that you didn't know what to do with and it was kind of crazy. I have a few of those. That would be a great place to put it and offset it with just some irregular groupings of chips. So that's idea number six. For the final idea for you for number seven, I have 
another earring design. I love this one, and it's so versatile, which of course is always what I love about designs. And this is just to make a cluster of chips on head pins. What I have here on this earring are a dozen of these little purple chips. Aren't they cute? I also have a 14 millimeter check glass button bead in opaque white that is up here. And then just a few, I think these are like maybe four by six rondelles, a little bit of chain. These are from Dollar Bead Box, a little itty bitty three millimeter brass beads, spacer beads. And I've got about an inch and a half long piece of chain. And some short little, you don't need them to be long, short little head pins. Now for this design, I just used the little brass beads, the little round three millimeter beads on half of my dangles. Just sometimes it can be too much and the variation can be nice. It's funny, I get these things in the dollar bead box and I look at it and say, what am I going to do with those? They're so small. And then I find all kinds of uses. Sometimes it's hard to find beads that are small enough for something. And I'll tell you one thing I have found sometimes, I actually end up using crimps. I think most of the time they're two millimeters. You can get different sizes, but they're the the uh, most common size I've found is two millimeters and they make fantastic little tiny spacer beads when you need them. So you go ahead and make a dozen little dangles the exact same way we did for the other pair of earrings using either round nose pliers or a one step looper is great and make sure here all of your loops are nice and closed. Here's my dozen chips. I've made sure on all of them that the loops are nicely closed. Now to add this part up here, you'll need a nice long head pin, bit of wire. I like to use head pins for this because they're hardened, so it's not real bendy. And what I'm going to do is make a loop, but I'm not going to make one this size. I want to make a bigger one. And again, you can definitely do this with your round nose pliers, but I happen to have the big looper. It makes a three millimeter loop, which is perfect for this. It works the same way. It just makes a bigger loop. So you'll need to have your chain all cut and ready to go. We're just going to open this up and start stacking on our little dangles. And I'm sort of alternating ones with the little ball on the end and ones without. So let's see, that's one, two, I think I got nine on the other one, three. And they're really crowded, but that's sort of the point. Four, okay, I'm gonna put four on. Then I'm going to put my chain and then another four or five. It might not be the same for this side because of course my chips are irregular and it may not fit the same, but let's see. One, two, three, that's pretty full. Three, maybe one more, maybe not. I gotta get in there with the pliers, maybe one more. Four, so it looks like this one yeah, let's see. Can I fit that one? Mm, that would be number nine. Okay, yeah, I do. You do have to have a little space, of course, to grasp that loop with your pliers so you can close it and kind of pack all those down on the other side. This part's probably the trickiest, is to get all of those contained in the loop, and it looks like I didn't. Oh, dear. <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. All right, I need to try that again, huh? Let's see how that has climbed up there. There just really isn't enough room for that ninth one. So I'm gonna pop that off and give them kind of a gentle, just little tap them down there. There should be room now. 
And when you tap them down, they sort of nestle and make that wonderful little cluster. And now we can grab that and close this up there. And so isn't that fantastic, the way they cluster? Now we can get this more full. You may wonder, oh, actually I only had what, seven on there. Oh, wow. Well, here's another way of doing it. Now that I have that end closed, and I'm sure it's closed, I can flip it over and possibly pop on a few more. It'll mean opening up the loops and then having to reach in there and close them. That's not too bad. So we're just letting gravity pull those out of the way. To get even more fullness in your little cluster, again, hang it upside down so that you can get in there and open up your loops and attach the loop to the chain. There. Now it may take a bit of fumbling and fiddling to get that in there. It's not easy and it's tight. It's a tight space. You can also loop subsequent ones onto this loop. If you can't get them to the chain, you can make it go ca kind of cascading down a little bit. So you just keep adding these to the chain. You get the idea. I don't have to show you all that. To finish up here, I'm just going to add one of my little three millimeter round beads, my glass button bead. And there will be links to all of these supplies at the accompanying blog post. All the supplies that I can find. Some of these things, like these amethyst chips, have been in my stash for a long time. Now I wanted to add a little crystal up here, but once a chain like th once a wire like this gets a lot of length on it, it, it doesn't dangle nicely. So I prefer to make a loop here and then put that crystal on its own piece of wire and that way you get a bit more movement. So I'm going to make a loop here. Make sure that's closed. Actually I can use this. I think there's enough here. Is there? Yeah, I think so. For the crystal. Make sure that's closed. Add my crystal. Let's see, I'm using... Oh, you know what? I ended up not using these bigger ones. That's right. I forgot about that. I was going to, but they just seemed a little too big. So I only use these smaller ones. Just enough there to make that. Put that on there. And then down here, uh, it's just a little dangle. You could do some variations on this if you wanted to make it a bit more tassel-like with the chain. You could add several lengths of chain instead of just one. You don't have to put the decoration on the bottom if you don't want to. It could just be several lengths of chain that are dangling down to make your decoration underneath. Here's just a little variation on that. This is a pair of earrings I made years ago and I love them and I wear them a lot. I always get compliments when I wear them too. This is similar except that the larger focal bead, this is a blister pearl, is on its own dangle and my little clusters of beads are all on just a 10 millimeter closed hoop of wire and that is what's dangling from the ear wire and then I put my focal in the middle of them all and when they hang down they just cluster oh so beautifully. 